Hello there. Welcome to episode 2 of the Agile Methodology Tutorial for Beginner Series. If you have not checked out the first episode yet, please use the link in the description box or you can click on the card on the top right corner to check it out before you watch this episode. Story so far. Jane wanted a home delivery mobile app for her restaurant Vegan Gardens. Jane meets Alex, a consultant from Webweave app development company, and Alex explains that they can have a basic working app in customers' hand within three months using Agile methodology. Jane is so thrilled with this proposal. Please subscribe to our channel if you have not done so already and also hit the bell icon so that you will be notified when the next episodes are posted. Let's continue our story. Jade was very pleased with Alex's proposal to use Agile methodology for development of her mobile app. She confirms Webweave as her technology partner for development of the app. Alex works with Jane to complete the onboarding procedures like contracts, payment schedules, and so on. There are several Agile frameworks like Scrum, Kanban, Extreme Programming available. Alex and his team are going to follow the Scrum framework to develop the app. We will cover Scrum in detail in the upcoming episodes. Jane was delighted to get started after completion of the onboarding formalities and asks Alex, what's next? Alex responds, discovery phase. Jane says, that sounds exciting and asks if he could explain it further. Alex continues, discovery phase is the most important part of the software development life cycle. In this phase, we focus on understanding the business and customer needs in detail and capture them in the form of requirements. Jane nods. The discovery phase consists of two stages, continues Alex. First step in the discovery phase is to identify the stakeholders who are impacted or receive benefit from this change. Your team managers, key staff and customers are few of these to quote an example. Second step involves engagement of these stakeholders to understand their needs and gather their requirements. Thanks Alex for giving me a clear understanding of this, said Jane. Alex then asks Jane about the key stakeholders in her team whom he should engage to discuss further. This could include branch managers, key staff members and also the current team who are handling the home delivery department. Jane then searches her files and then gives Alex a copy of her organization chart and state that it has the list of various division managers and team leaders from different departments and would give the details he needed. Alex thanks Jane and tells her that she has missed another set of key stakeholders. Jane confirms that the chart should cover all of her catering chain. Alex replies, your customers. Jane smiles back, yeah, you're right, almost forgot. Alex continues, can we meet a few of your regular customers and speak with them to know their expectations from this mobile app just to confirm if our thought process is in line with their needs. Jane replies that she has most of her customers on a mailing list and she can also check with a few regular customers for their time. Alex said that this had offered him an awesome starting point. He also wanted to think about the strategy for the involvement of those stakeholders and then discuss it with her. Alex returns to office and drafts the engagement proposal and shares with Jane. A full day workshop on Monday. Survey to customers on Tuesday and this will be based on Monday session. Focus group meeting with the customers on Friday. Jane agrees to the plan. Alex arranges a full day workshop in the office of Webweave. He books a big conference room for 20 people and arranges facilities such as whiteboards, projectors, adequate seating and so on. Refreshments such as lunch, coffee and snacks were also planned. Next, Alex prepares a comprehensive agenda for the day. 
It has the session specifics for the day so that the stakeholders come prepared for the sessions. He sends out an invite to all the stakeholders. He gets acceptance from majority of them but gets declined from Richard who is listed as the chairman. Alex then asks if he should reschedule for a convenient day but gets no response from Richard. Alex asks Jane about Richard. Jane sighs and tells that Richard is her father and that he is not very keen on this idea. She also informs that she just has the budget for basic version of the app and beyond that they needed approval from him to go further. She also said that she thought she could change his mind by showing him the first version of the app. Jane also asks Alex if he could speak to Richard separately and get his acceptance for the project. Alex nods and informs that he could meet him separately, understand his concerns, work to mitigate the same and facilitate an agreement. He calls up Richard and requests for his time. Richard wasn't keen on attending the workshop, but he tells Alex that he could meet him at his office on Thursday at 11 a.m. Alex thanks Richard for the same. In the meantime, Jane confirms back that she has set up one hour slot post Friday lunch with few of her regular customers who had agreed to participate in the focus group session. Alex was delighted and tells her that they could quickly run past the ideas with them. Now, the sessions were booked for the next week and the same were blocked in their calendars. Alex talks to his organization and provides the specifications for this project in order to bring in the project team. In Scrum methodology, Alex is playing the role of a product owner. More on roles and responsibilities in next episodes. Phil gets assigned to the project as a business analyst and will assist Alex in capturing and refining the requirements. In the meantime, Alex spends some time doing benchmarking and market analysis. He takes a look at the trends and patterns of the restaurant industry. The trend signified that there would be year-on-year -year increase in the online home delivery orders, which would be great for Jane's business. He also does a comprehensive research about a few well-known and successful restaurants to know what they have been doing to get there. He finds that Few have their own app and service. Few have their own app but rely on third-party service for delivery. Few have listed their service as a part of third delivery app for booking and delivery. It was Monday. Alex reaches office early and checks if all the facilities are in place. He greets Jane and her staff who arrive on time. He then uses the shared agenda to write the workshop. Phil, the business analyst, also takes part in the workshop and plays the role of a scribe, documenting the summary of discussions, decisions, requirements and open items. Jane's team was enthusiastic and came up with a good chunk of requirements for both customer side and staff side. The workshop was a success, offering a better understanding of the needs of the team. Alex spends the last session of the workshop by providing a walkthrough of the high-level requirements that were captured during the workshop. Customer side requirements. Number one, register and login. Number two, items group by categories. Number three, search for items. Number four, add and remove items. Number five, online payment, card, internet banking, wallets. Number 6. Tracking Number 7. Support Staff side requirements Number 1. Staff portal Number 2. Order alert Number 3. Support addressing Number 4. GPS navigation for delivery staff Stakeholders agreed and then everyone left for the day. The following day, Alex works with Phil to come up with the survey questions based on the features logged from the previous day's workshop. Questions were based along the lines below. Would they order online? How many times would they order in a week? Whether they prefer the mobile app to the web app? The operating system of their phones? Whether they would like to make online payments? And so on. 
Alex had spoken to Jane to get the respondents a discount voucher code to promote the survey submission. Jane had agreed to give them 15% off on their next order at Bacon Gardens as this data was very valuable and would save her thousands of dollars later. Alex uses a survey software to send an online survey to the email of the customers. He sets Thursday as the deadline to complete the survey. As planned, Alex goes to Richard's office on Wednesday. Richard greets him and they begin a conversation. Alex asks Richard the reason for not liking the home delivery mobile app idea. Richard says, dining is an experience and to experience it, customers need to come to the restaurant. If home delivery service is available, then customers will stop coming to the restaurant. Alex uses active learning technique, acknowledges his concerns and takes notes about the discussions. Alex shows the industry study reports to Richard and mentions that many people prefer to dine at home and hence the revenue would decrease over a period of time if home delivery was not offered. He also mentions about the competitors who were already into it. He also suggests that they could start delivering in the areas in which they did not have a branch. Alex says, However, I agree with you that dining is an experience and people who want the experience will still come for it. Richard was convinced. However, he wanted the actual data for his restaurant. Alex mentions that they would be initially deploying it to one of their branches, do a split testing and come back with the results before rolling out to the other branches. Richard was happy with this approach. Alex shakes hands with Richard and makes his way back to the office. Alex and Phil, as planned, head to Wagon Gardens for the focus group session on Friday. In the workshop which was held earlier that week with Jane's team, customer-facing requirements were identified. However, getting them validated by the actual customers and identifying any of their additional needs is very crucial to ensure that a right product is built. Focus group is one such technique to achieve this. Alex selects a few open-ended questions from the survey which was sent to the customers earlier. During the session, Alex uses them to get the customer's opinion and also checks if they have any additional needs. Phil makes a note of the participants' feedback. Once all the items in the questionnaire were completed, Alex thanked the participants for their help. Focus group was also insightful. Couple of new requirements came up like recurring feature where customers would be getting lunch or dinner on a daily basis. They also wanted live chat to be available in the app to address issues in real time. Post the focus group session, Phil compiles the reports based on the insights received and shares the same with the key stakeholders. On Friday evening, Alex and Phil download the responses from the survey software and start their analysis. One key info emerged from the customer's response. 65% of the customers who had responded had Android phones. This would be helpful in prioritization. Friday evening, Alex had a phone call with Jane to summarize the findings so far. Jane was overwhelmed with the progress. What are our next steps? She asks. Alex responds, Sprint Zero. Jane was curious to know what Sprint Zero was all about. Let's summarize the learnings from this episode. Number one, discovery phase is all about identifying the needs and requirements of the impacted stakeholders. Number two, first step in this phase is to identify the stakeholders. Both internal and external stakeholders should be identified. Some of the ways to identify the impacted stakeholders are by speaking to the sponsor of the project, having a look at the organizational charts, process flows, and so on. Number three, engagement. There are varieties of ways to engage the stakeholders based on the scenarios. We touched upon few techniques in this video like workshop with the internal team, 
focus groups with customers, interview with difficult stakeholders, and survey for collecting details from huge volume of stakeholders. Number four, if you miss a stakeholder, it would be a catastrophe for the project go live and hence we should ensure that we have identified all the stakeholders who will be impacted and engage them. Also like Richard, there will always be difficult stakeholders who are not happy with the idea and therefore speaking to them alone and trying to address their concerns with data and other supporting materials is the best way to go ahead. We have a detailed how-to training videos on these topics. The links have been included in the description below for your reference. Check it out. Watch out for our next episode to learn about Sprint Zero. Until then, bye and happy learning.